Hey there, lab rats. Welcome back to the Taekwondo Lab. My name is Coach Husky, and here's what we'll be going over in today's video. Here we are in the lab, where athletes like you hone their skills to take their game to the next level. Want to know when we're coming out with new videos just like this one? To smash that like button and follow us on our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. That way, you're always in the loop on the latest Taekwondo strategies and you never miss out on a contest or giveaway exclusive to our social media followers. Today, I'm joined by Haiti national team member, multi-time AAU national team member, multi-time national champion, the 2022 Junior Pan American gold medalist, and the number three world-ranked junior athlete in the minus 73 division, Sean Lone. Ready to get started, Sean? Yes, sir. In June of this year, 2022, World Taekwondo released some updates to their Olympic-style sparring rules. As this video specifically relates to new techniques we've developed for the clinch, we will only be covering the latest rules about the clinch exclusively. Let's get into it. In regards to clinching, there are four takeaways that all athletes and coaches should be mindful of. Takeaway number one. Fight is now called immediately upon entering the clinch. As you can see from this video here, from the 2022 Grand Prix in Rome, the referee calls fight as soon as the athletes enter the clinch. Takeaway number two. Athletes now have three seconds after fight is called to break up the clinch themselves. If athletes don't break up the clinch themselves within three seconds, the referee will call Calio, which leads us to takeaway number three. If the referee has to call Calio, someone has to get the point deduction. In this case, the point deduction will go to the athlete who is the least active in the clinch. This is determined by an athlete continuing to shut down an opponent in the clinch rather than kicking, signified by hands and arm position extending past the opponent's body as shown here. Takeaway number four, you can no longer kick to the back of the head or the body with the bottom or side of the foot while in the clinch. Doing so will earn you a point deduction. While crescent kicks aimed at the side of the head are still allowed, this rule is controversial as an opponent's head typically turns to the back in an attempt to avoid the crescent kick and it is not currently clear if an opponent's head turn causing a kick to land on the back of the head is worthy of a point deduction. These rules have caused us at the lab to modify how we see the clinch and develop and train new methods to ensure our athletes don't receive point deductions, considering you are now only allowed four point deductions per round. Anything over will cause you to lose the round. Here are three tactics we're using with our athletes currently to prevent point deductions from the clinch. The first tactic is just not to enter the clinch at all. It's important to understand the reason behind the implementation of these rules surrounding the clinch in the first place, which is to de-incentivize entering the clinch. Now, only one kick can score in the clinch and only when aimed to a particular spot on the head. On top of that, you now only have three seconds in the clinch, which is not a whole lot of time considering that struggling in the clinch is common ever since pushing became legal. Struggling with an opponent, will almost assuredly incite a point deduction on someone's behalf and largely at the center ref's discretion. That being the case, it's better to not risk the point deduction. This means that entering the clinch is now reserved as a last resort to avoid being scored on. The second tactic we teach our athletes is purely preventative and used when an opponent attempts a clinching technique. While we are calling it the new clinch, is actually not a clinch at all, but it does serve as a means to ensure that your hands are in the most optimal position to deter a clinch and help combat against being on the receiving end of a point deduction. So how is the new clinch done? Since the new clinch is purely preventative in nature, it requires some opponent readability and recognizing the most common methods in which an opponent enters the clinch. While there are three common methods, we'll demonstrate using the easier of the three and showcase the rest later on in this video. One of the ways we see athletes enter the clinch, although now less common, 
is just to hop forward, jamming their opponent. When this occurs, instead of wrapping your hands and arms around the side of the opponent's body, we are changing our hand position to land our palms flat on our opponent's chest protector. To start, ensure that your arms are not extended so that you keep pushing power and the ability to create space to kick reserved for later use. After reading the jam, you have one of two options that your hands are in the best position for. The first, is just to simply push your opponent backward. In this position, you have a majority of the leverage as it's difficult for your opponent to get inside your hand position to combat against the push like they could when pushing against the shoulders. To train this new position, it's best to get some rounds in where athletes can practice the new placement of their hands to help override entering the clinch the old way. Feel free to add having your athletes perform a kick of some sort when pushing as well. Remember that pushing out of bounds is still illegal. If you remember from the video we did on the punch, there are two other more common methods used today to enter the clinch. The video is linked below if you haven't watched it so you can get up to speed, but for those who have watched the video, we're going to use these same two methods to demonstrate the second option you have with the new clinch hand position, and that is to create space for a kick. This option is a little bit more difficult of the two as it requires advanced training to not only create space, but to keep the arms firm, preventing your opponent from advancing forward, collapsing the arms back to the starting position of this technique. Here we are demonstrating how an athlete enters the clinch by initiating a cut kick followed by a punch. This will require you to read the punch when you see it coming so that you can put your hands in the proper position on the chest protector. Then, keeping your arms firm, extend them by moving your body backward instead of pushing, all while keeping your hands firm on the chest protector. This will create the space needed to insert a kick. In this case, Sean uses a round kick. To train the movement, we use the wall as it provides the resistance we need to be firm as the wall cannot be pushed back, forcing us to move ourselves. Second, training on the wall allows us to work on our foot position at the same time. When pushing yourself backward, it's important that the feet land in the proper position for whichever kick you decide to use after. That way, you maximize the limited time you have to score. After training on the wall, you can now train with a partner, isolating the technique outside of a free sparring situation. Lastly, we see athletes also enter the clinch by waiting for their opponent's cut kick to drop, to throw a punch, and clinching immediately after. If you can read this, you can perform the new clinch hand position to use one of the two options we mentioned in this video. Once the athlete is comfortable with performing the technique in isolation, then it's time to train them to better read when the clinch is coming. For this, all you need to do is have your athletes free spar with the goal of using the new hand position every time a clinch is performed. Here, Sean and I demonstrate a free sparring situation where he is the chosen athlete who will perform the new hand position in the clinch. He and I both are allowed to do whatever techniques we choose but when Sean sees either my cut, punch, and clinch, or punch and clinch after his cut, he's to react properly with not only hand position, but also a follow-up technique. Hey, look, that's all for this week on the Taekwondo Lab. Make sure you follow and check into the lab on Facebook during your next training session. We want to know what you're doing. Also, make sure you tag and follow us on Instagram, especially if you're trying some of our stuff. We love to see videos of your training sessions, exercise routines, and just general Taekwondo videos. Lastly, make sure you subscribe to our podcast, where we'll discuss our weekly videos in depth, going over strategy and the pro way to use combinations and techniques. We'll also talk directly to our viewers, taking calls, answering questions, and conducting interviews of world-class athletes and coaches. Until next time, Lab Rats.